Next day, we're getting our pre-trip done. I'm actually starting in the morning for once. This is a fun one. So, we're headed out. We got about four and a half hours left. For you guys that didn't see the last video, it is cold outside. I'm I'm still gonna show you the load. Just I, I'm freezing, but winter time sucks. We got a full tank. We got about 274 miles, so we should be dropping both these trailers before one. I got up a little late, but I was tired. Whatever. All right. Here's the rest of the load. I got two. Two left. Make sure we don't got any tire blowouts. Because I did not do a post trip because, well, I had shit to do. Look at that. We got two good tires on this side. So, that's all that matters. Lights are dim for some reason. Oh, that's why. Yeah, the Fords are weird. These, well, I think it's these newer trucks in general. They're weird. They kind of put some power output but not enough so I'm gonna turn the lights on make sure we have we have lights cool all right well there you go you saw the load you'll see the rest of it when we get there in about four and a half hours I, I stayed up late last night getting two videos edited I edited one and I got the other one halfway done and I was like I'm just gonna go to bed because I'm tired so let's get it subway all the way up here I could have parked in this lot I didn't realize it but I guess this place is close. This would be a good little spot. Surprised nobody buys it. Probably because it's New York and uh, they tax the shit out of you. Good little spot. I'm gonna get up to that light, make a left. I had to park all the way down here. But I gotta check the load. It's windy and miserable, but there I walked all the way up there. We parked her down here. Try to scale this hill here. Very, very steep hill. Uh, just unlocked her. I'm enjoying driving this thing. It's getting over 10 now miles per gallon since we got rid of some of those loads. But here's the uh, trailers. I'm going to go over and check them. It looks like some things may have moved. Alright, so here's how she's doing. Everything I thought was tight. That's tight. Still tight. Looks like that board up there moved. <sighs> yeah, I guess that doesn't even need to be there. They wrapped all those around. Yep, still good. Tight. Tight. I didn't put any straps back here. This one's a little loose, but that's just because it's on wood. I don't want to damage that. So I think we got about two hours till we go drop. Goose next doing all right. All right, let's get out of here. I just gotta get a picture of it once it's. The only one that used the forklift, everybody else had cranes so, yeah. come down. Really? Yeah. Usually you use slings and pick it up and swing. That's how they were doing it, yeah. It's kinda nice to have something like that. Yeah. We just wanna go to fucking lunch. I was gonna say I'm like I can I can sit around and wait I'm not in any hurry but they were going to lunch so didn't have too much time to film I gotta figure out where the next one's going it's going right up the street so I think I'm gonna throw probably two straps on it probably one in the back one in the front and we'll call it good right. the ratchet that was in here I had to get a hammer out because the friggin you can't pull it up through and it was wrapped in there so yeah that was fun but got it because um, you can see if this is here this won't clear so I had to use a hammer to like pound it out of the way so I could get it back up through. So some, I didn't wrap these initially. Um, that's the company that loads them. So I got it. We're all good. We're gonna get out of here. I think it's like five minutes up the road. All right, so we just got this one clean and I'm going through the comments on the new video, right? And I'm gonna answer this question, uh, question here. So basically two things we gotta go over, right? I just unstrapped you know all the straps and I restrapped them you can see my hands like okay so you see this you see I have a tub of towels here okay so two things one if you're a Karen in the comments complaining about oh no his hands got dirty that's what happens when you work on your own equipment if you're gonna complain about getting a little bit of dirt on your hands you're not gonna survive in this industry for one Always keep a tub of towels on you. Two, 
I think I drove for the last two days and I haven't had to touch anything on the truck since I did the brakes. So my hands have been pretty spotless. Actually, I've been pretty spotless. It's actually friggin' great. But now look at that. See? See how much of a difference they make? They're great. Now, I don't know if in the video, like, my hands are kind of, like, permanently stained. I think my whole body's kind of permanently stained from all the diesel fuel and all the shit that I work on. But, like I was saying, if that's what you come to my videos to complain on... So, the other thing, too, about this truck, right? So, my I will be getting uh, a Ram again. Don't worry, we're still going to go with a Ram. Um, reason being is I just know the trucks. They're a little bit more affordable, um, and that's just me, okay? That's that's my personal preference. This truck basically uh, came up as someone's going to be going in it on the 13th, and it's just sitting, and I was given the offer to kind of do maybe like a little lease agreement on it um, for the time being. Just, But we don't really have to make an agreement. We can just, like, it's nothing on paper. It's just, hey, come run this truck. Tell me what you think. Do some reviews on it. Make some money. Bada bing, bada boom. If not, it was just going to sit. So that's kind of the whole deal on it. Um, it's just, I know somebody with equipment. So I'm still leased under JT Hot Shotting. I am, I do have my own DOT numbers and all the other bullshit, but it is way cheaper to be leased on than it is for me to actually go out and get my authority back up. Insurance is expensive in Pennsylvania. So we're going to get out of here. Like I said, we got about, oh, it's literally a mile. So I put two straps on the trailer. It's not going to go anywhere. I'm going 0.9 of a mile. All right, this is a very, very sharp turn. I'm going to have to take up the other lane. Look at that. I see why it says no trucks. I thought they just hated truck drivers. Nope, turns out that that was a very, very steep turn. Guys, what are you thinking about the hotshot content? What do, you, what do you think? Um, do you want to see more of this truck? Um, I'll have it for the next, uh, I, I think, two and a half weeks. So let me know if you guys want to see more of it. Um, like I was saying, it is a 10 speed, so I'm getting used to that. I do like the fact that I can get rid of gears, but I do feel like a tune, like a transmission tune would, I, I feel like would be awesome because it always, it, it seems to either overcompensate or undercompensate. So it always wants to keep the RPMs around 1300 unless you really lay into it. But we are here. That didn't take long. Um, see if I can't find the entrance to this place. Right, last one. Let's get it off here. They're gonna fork it off and then we need to grab that spare. Already talked to them. Get these things going. I'll show you on that strap. See how it like just barely fits in there? My dilemma is this only fits if you do it a certain way. So if you do it like that, it doesn't. There you go. See? So it's a tight fit. Sorry about the wind. Big ass forklifts. The amount of prep time they put into these things to get that wood on there. There she be. There's Tyler. I just turned around in that little yard back there. We did a full u-turn back there now now we got to figure out where we're going next are we going home or are we going to a truck stop we're looking for loads we'll see if we don't find anything today we'll have something for monday all right well so we'll see how jumpy this footage is here so i think it's time that i give you my full unbiased opinion on what i think i should do with getting a new truck and my kind of overall review on this thing so i'm not gonna lie besides the exhaust brake I do kind of like this thing more than the Rams. Still not a big fan of the interiors, but I don't think an interior is that important of a choice when it comes down to preference. I mean, the seats are comfortable, you know, there's plenty of cab space, this and that. So here, here's how I'm gonna say this, right? So this is a 2022, it has the 10 speed. Um, it has the CP4 disaster prevention kit. 
This truck has 87, or almost 89,000 miles now. It's at 88.7. If this thing was in the budget and I had the income to match to spend this much money on a vehicle, I would probably buy one. Now, with that being said, if you look at, okay, I could still always go out and buy, say, a 2011 plus truck that still has the 6.7. But there's two drawbacks to that. Two. One, it doesn't have the exhaust brake that this one has. And even this exhaust brake is kind of weak and subpar. Um, it also doesn't have the 10 speed. I feel like that is a major deal breaker. I like I do like this transmission. And from the things that I'm hearing about it, from the people with the experience on it, it is a hit or miss, but usually they still fail within the warranty period. And if they don't, they're actually not that hateful to buy a new one and you get a decent warranty. So I agree with that. And if it was in the budget, I would 100% buy one of these things. Minus, see this is where it kind of throws me off though. I don't like the exhaust brake. I don't like how weak it is. I don't like, I want that added braking power. I just do, I don't know. But that's literally the only thing I think Ram offers over the rest of this stuff. And from what I'm hearing with these newer trucks, um, when the Rams break, they seem to be in the dealership for a very long time waiting on parts. When the Fords break, from what I've heard, the turnaround time is a lot, a lot faster. It kind of sucks to say, I mean, considering that I'm going to be the one to work on my own stuff, I'm going to stick with the Ram just because I, I want that exhaust brake and I'm going to stick with a 2010 to 2012. Still going that route. Um, it's still a new-ish truck. They're still about 10 to 12 years old. But they tow a lot better than my old setup would have. As much as I liked it at originally, they tow a lot better. They still get decent fuel mileage when they're deleted. They still sound cool and they have a nice interior. I like the interior of the Rams, I just do. So there's my little rant on that. Now, secondly, I know I say a lot of bad things about this industry because I would be a terrible person if I told you how good this industry was. I would, you see all these guys out here, they make, they're making great money, so they're claiming, you know, they're doing all right, but that's only about 50% no, actually, no, that's, I, I wouldn't even say that's 50%. I'd say that's probably 10%. 10% of what you see is hotshot YouTubers making a shitload of money, doing really well. And unfortunately, in this industry, it's one of those you're either going to make a lot of money or you're going to go bankrupt or broke or lose everything. And that is an unfortunate thing about this industry is you will more than likely lose everything if you start in this industry. I have guys all the time asking and telling me, hey, how do I get into this industry? What do I need to do? Most guys think that it's gonna be a great fun and and unfortunately, it's not like it used to be. It just isn't and I don't know if it ever is gonna be again. Obviously, Hot Shot's never gonna go anywhere, but the money that it used to be making, like the guys that are out here, these guys have to do it to enjoy it. Because as much as I used to enjoy hauling and I loved being over the road and then I found out how to be home every day, I really do hate this industry. It's a terrible industry for at least 90% of the people. 10% are out there doing great, have no complaints. Might even be lower than that. It's definitely not higher than that. But it is very easy to lose everything in this industry. And then when you start a big company, I mean, you can use whoever you want as an example, but whenever you start a big company, all it takes is for one driver to hit or cause the wrong accident, you lose everything. You lose the business, depending on how you have it set up, they can take you. It is a huge risk and it's a huge gamble. And guys, I need you guys to understand that when you're asking me these questions. This is not a simple industry. Anybody you see out here killing it has experience. They're not gonna show you. Look at Buskins. I'm gonna use him as an example. I liked watching his channel, but that dude got into this channel, into this industry thinking that he was gonna make all this money, blew up two trucks, and then quit, and then tried to do a series on exposing hotshot trucking. 
when everybody knows how it is that's already in the industry. This is not a good industry. It's a terrible industry for most people. So unless you know what you're doing, you have common sense, you're a problem solver, this is not the industry for the faint hearted. You, and, and this is why I run the way that I do. You know, I, I don't run hard. I, I don't anymore. There's no need to. I'm not gonna kill myself over this industry. I work the way I want to, my bills are paid, I have savings, I have my crypto, I have a lot of my shit paid off. But I am gonna keep doing it because unfortunately, I do know how to run, but unfortunately, I still need the little bit of money that this industry generates. By the way, I love that this Ford has a cruise control and I can set the number to where I want it to be. I don't know, I like this thing. If, if I had $87,000, I'd buy one of these in a dually. Or if I had that good credit, as I'm telling you guys not to do that. Yeah, yeah I, I probably wouldn't spend that much money. One of those. Don't come out here. I'm, I'm gonna go over some numbers with you guys now. Don't come out here, go buy a brand new truck. Brand new truck's gonna cost you what? Let's say 70,000 on the low end, right? 70,000. You lease it for, you finance it for seven years, which is already crazy but you finance it for seven years because the payment's gonna be higher, you make it down. Payments are gonna be insane. You need to double down on your payments. In two and a half years, when you still owe $35,000 on your truck and it's got half a million miles on it, you're gonna be like, wow, what the fuck did I do? So that's one. Two, trailer payment. You're gonna spend 20 grand on a trailer, easy. 20 grand on a trailer, a brand new Big Tex, $20,000 for a 40 footer. Then you got your insurance. Let's call it $2,000 a month. That's a simple round number, right? Majority of you guys aren't gonna be getting that. So truck, trailer, between all that, there's, I don't know, $4,500, $5,000 in payments, just by that itself. There's guys out here that are running just to pay for the fact that they're running because they got themselves in that debt. Now they're stuck here. And that's where it comes to losing it. You get one breakdown on that truck and you can't pay it. You also need to have $10,000 sitting aside. So I got a phone call. Forgot a little bit of where I left off. I'm pretty sure I was talking about the payments and stuff. So I'm gonna be home probably in about three and a half hours. The, I gotta stop and get fuel yet. And then we'll be home for the night. And then they're gonna start searching for me for something for Monday in Carlisle. So I'm getting dispatched everything. This is nice. So I just gotta figure out this freight game. I've uh, never really done freight before. And the thing I didn't like about freight was just how inconsistent, like there's so much different shit. And then tarps and all that, never liked it. That also kind of ruined the industry for me. Um, cars, problem with cars is they're cheap. Most people that are shipping cars are broke. Anybody can own a car, doesn't matter. Boats are nice. Campers, I never understood why either. Campers, nobody wants to pay money either for them to get moved. There's a lot of expenses. There's a lot of hard work that goes into this industry. There's a lot of things. Like if you're gonna run an older truck, you'll run into the shit that I did with my previous truck. Doesn't matter, I mean, even if you use quality parts, like older trucks, they kind of just, they, they do break. It is what it is. Um, and then you get the newer trucks where Ram has the problem. If you go and buy a new Ram, which I don't recommend, and they break, they're gonna be in a dealership for months. And then you're fucked because now you're not making any money. I've heard, I don't know, I've heard good things about the Ford, so I don't know, maybe one day I'll buy a new Ford. I don't know that I'm gonna buy a new a new Ram at this point, but we'll see how it goes with the new truck. We see what we do with it. If it makes sense to buy a new truck at some point, maybe I will. I really like this thing. I hate to admit it. The Rams kind of put you to sleep. This, not really. This kind of keeps you awake, I don't understand. It is pretty quiet in the cab too, but. Definitely need some window tint because I hate this thing being a fishbowl. Well, we're gonna get fuel here at the pilot. Um, and it's damn full. All right, we just got fuel and now I gotta deal with all those messages on the damn dash, there we go. All right, so just reset it. So now we should be getting pretty good mileage. Now that we're empty, so also guys. Ford comes with a uh, gun holder in here. I put my fuel receipts in here, but for uh, all the Democrats in New York, stay strapped or get clapped. That's the Ford area for your your peace, but uh, I have, I don't know. 
My Dodge has always had a good spot for it. I, I gotta find a good spot for it in here. 